I'm going to begin my presentation. <laughs> 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 uh, text mining efforts to symmetric grasp is um, the theme of my talk. But um, I will mostly uh, introduce this specific service, Hub Annotation, uh, which is a service uh, we are developing in this series. Very briefly speaking, Hub Annotation is a storage system and a repository system for um, literature annotation. And it is also a platform and uh, environment for literature annotation. And, um, let me um, directly go to the system demo so that you can quickly capture the idea of the system. So uh, this is how uh, this um, power notation service looks like. And um, you can see there are three annotation projects in uh, the uh, power annotation now. And, uh, you can log in and then you can create your own annotation uh, project. And uh, of course for the new project you have to give the name of the project and a brief description of the project. And um, uh, you need to specify the author of the project and a uh, license. And um, you can specify the status of the project. And um, you can choose it to be public or private project. And um, you have to specify the annotation editor. If you don't have one, you can use the default annotation editor of pub annotation, which is um, textile. And if you have one, you can also specify the IDF writer and also um, XML writer. And we created a new annotation project. And now there's no document in this project, but you can add one by giving a PMID or PMCID. So by giving this PMCID, a PubMed full paper article is added to this um, project, and it has um, many sections and subsections, they are divided into um, uh, different um, divisions. And if you see one of the division, uh, this subsection is this text. And there's no annotation yet because um, we just created this um, project. You can begin uh, producing annotation manually. Or well, another option is um, using an automatic tool so that uh, annotation can be uh, automatically produced. Uh, 170 annotation was produced based on NGS gene uh, database. You can see it in a visual editor. So uh, each box here attached to a span uh, represents an entry in an NGS gene. So, uh, this amount of interest in entries are annotated uh, to uh, this uh, text span. Of course, it's an um, automatic annotation, so there are there may be some errors, so you can uh, edit it, so you can delete uh, unnecessary things, and then you can adjust the boundary of the uh, annotation. And uh, of course, you can uh, create a new annotation. And uh, this this editor has um, this editor is um, uh, quite powerful on do and review system, so you can uh, make use of it uh, for your edition. And after uh, you've done with your edition, uh, you can save it. And um, 
the result of the annotation you can see uh, in um, RDF. If you specified on RDF on um, writers, or you can see it in, in JSON, or if you specified on um, XML writer, you can also get it in XML. And um, uh, get back to the uh, front page of the notation, uh, we see that there are uh, 12 PMD documents with some annotation uh, produced by some of these um, projects. And um, we just uh, produced an annotation to this um, PMC article to um, this section. So um, it shows um, this text has um, some annotation produced by this project which we just created. And there are also another project which produced annotation to this text. So um, this is basically uh, what you can do with um, top annotation. And this is end of the system demo. Uh, this is uh, another example of annotation. So with a uh, pop annotation, you can also um, produce um, a more complex annotation like um, relation annotation or uh, event annotation. So for all this kind of work, uh, what pop annotation provides is um, the functionality uh, for it to be an annotation repository and um, search engine so that you can search on specific annotations using Sparkle uh, or SQL. Uh, and um, it also has some quite powerful alignment function. Um, and um, it can be connected with um, external services like an annotation editor or an automatic annotator. And um, also, as I uh, showed, uh, the annotations can be exported to many uh, formats. Uh, one thing I would like to mention is um, pub annotation has a quite powerful alignment function. So um, uh, it is uh, quite useful to um, aggregate uh, and uh, integrate um, annotations produced by uh, different uh, annotation projects. And pub annotation has an um, open architecture. So um, I showed that um, pub annotation, when you create a project, uh, you can specify annotation editor and RDM writer and XML writer. And um, although we are also um, developing um, kind of prototype systems for for um, those, um, it can be connected to kind of um, external uh, services like um, there are other uh, annotation editors like Arizai, Red, or Notator developed by um, other groups by developing a simple wrapper that can communicate with the REST API or pub annotation, I believe they can be used together with pub annotation easily. And um, IDF conversion also, um, there are, you know, yeah, here we also have um, experts of um, IDF um, compo composition, IDF composing, and uh, like um, bio-interchanging, uh, open linguistics and um, uh, pub annotation is um, developed uh, to be neutral to uh, those um, uh, initiatives and um, I believe pub annotation can be connected to those um, external uh, initiatives without problem. Uh, XML conversion uh, also. So. Um, with this um, pub annotation service, uh, we are aiming at improving the productivity of annotation and the uh, shareability of annotation, not only including NLP or text mining community, but also including semantic web and um, erodine communities. 
with open architecture and um, open source systems. Uh, this is the end of the introduction to um, publication. And, um, uh, I'm going to introduce um, two more services which are somehow related to uh, language related uh, processing. First, I want to find out the factory on the cloud. So, there are two um, assist ontology development based on uh, existing resources, specifically BioPora. So, we are encouraging this way of um, ontology development. First, you need to uh, search for um, uh, relevant ontologies and then you collect uh, relevant parts of those ontologies and then you can begin development of your annotation. Ah, I'm sorry, uh, develop, uh, development of your ontology development. And then when, when your ontology is matured, you can register it back to BioPortal. And um, on the finder and on the factory service assist these two uh, steps. This is a snapshot of on the factory. Uh, you can give a list of keywords and uh, on the finder will give you a list of matching ontologies with matching terms and you can collect uh, relevant uh, terms for your ontology and you can export the collected terms <coughs> into uh, our and this is OntoCloud, it is a um, visualization of um, ontologies in BioPortal. It uh, visualizes the relationship and the size of the ontologies in BioPortal. And, and also um, it visualizes what we call uh, ontology shape. So if you see some ontologies have a triangle shape, uh, it means um, they are mostly um, taxonomies uh, of something. And uh, those with a uh, round shape, they have a uh, rich relationship between terms in the ontologies. <coughs> and if you want to know more about um, the cloud, please find this guy, Simon Kotzbeck, who will be around <coughs> your hackathon. And um, this is the um, last service I'm going to introduce. Uh, LODQA is a project to uh, process natural language queries to automatically uh, generate the Spark language. And uh, Kevin Cohen and I worked for it uh, from the last biohackathon and we will continue uh, to work on it. Uh, so through my talk, I um, introduced, uh, I introduced um, this uh, services. So um, I don't have really a, a concluding remark, but um, um, productivity is actually on my main theme of uh, research always, especially productivity of uh, autonomous productivity of uh, content holders is my main interest. And welcome to Biohackathon.